Secondhand smoke is a major issue across the country today, and it affects many adults and children each year. It is the mixture of two types of smoke, sidestream smoke, which is the smoke coming off the lighted end of a cigarette, and mainstream smoke, which is what the smoker exhales. Both of these contain carcinogens, which are harmful to adults, but are especially harmful to children. Dr. Paul Ruff, a pediatrician in Starkville, explains some of the risk involved when children are exposed to secondhand smoke. These include asthma development, um, increased incidence of chronic cough, sinusitis, ear infections, pneumonia, bronchitis, loads of respiratory infections um, are a risk for a small child or an infant exposed mm -hmm. to secondhand smoke. According to the American Cancer Society, there are around 3,400 lung cancer deaths each year as a result of breathing secondhand smoke. It also causes 50,000 to 300,000 lung infections in children younger than 18 months of age. Dr. Robert McMillan of the SSRC explains why secondhand smoke is more harmful to children. Well, there, there are several reasons. One is that children are in a developmental stage, so these toxins and carcinogens have more of an impact on their developing bodies. Also, children have a higher metabolism, so they're processing this, these um, toxins and carcinogens more rapidly. And then um, the other is that children don't have a vote. If you're an adolescent or an adult and somebody's smoking around you, you can get up and leave. Yeah. But if you are a child in a car seat or a child in, in, at home, an infant, it's harder to vote with your feet. So children just don't have a voice. So it's their metabolism, their developmental stage, the fact that they don't have a voice, and then again the fact that they are also you know, closer to the upholstery, etc. Since children are at a higher risk, it is important for pediatricians and physicians to caution parents about smoking around their children. Occasionally there will be a child um, that for special reasons, prematurity, uh, asthma, immune deficiency, chronic lung disease, there will be times when as the advocate for the child, we must counsel specific parents against the increased risk that that child has associated with secondhand smoke exposure. Although many parents are aware of the potential effects secondhand smoke can have on their children, tobacco addiction can be difficult to overcome. People do not understand how powerful the nicotine addiction is. Again, I can't give you the I can't give you the citation, but uh, common knowledge has said that addiction to nicotine is seven times more powerful than addiction to cocaine. Research has shown that parents who smoke around their children are more likely to attempt to quit if their child's physician advises them to do so. For adult smokers who have not heard the cessation message from any health care provider, about 43% of them will make a quit attempt in any given year. If they've heard it from one provider, about 53% will have made a quit attempt. If they hear it from two providers, about 58%. And if they hear it from three, then 77%. Even though this research is encouraging, Dr. Collins explains that children whose parents smoke are at a greater risk of becoming smokers themselves. Oh, that's a, that's a proven, proven event. event the, mo, the best predictor of adult smoking is a parent who smokes. Period.